Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. It is Friday morning, September 4th, 2020. Welcome to a new episode of Today's Best Stock Picks and going to review a little bit of what happened yesterday. But first and foremost, I want to say if you are new to the channel, every day we have uh, both trading setups as well as education. And I think today's educational video is incredibly important. Uh, so I don't know where it's going to pop up on the screen here, but um, I, I normally don't do that. But I, I feel like it's super important for the price action that we're having right now, uh, the different um, types of days that we're having right now, where we go from euphoric to the world <laughs> collapsing in, in six and a half hours in the stock market. Um, so I'm going to post it here. And it's essentially how professional traders manage positions. That's the big thing I want to get across today, because I think today it's really important we're going to discuss how to trade Apple today and working a position into Apple. Uh, yesterday, we did the same thing with Tesla. So just click on that link. And by the way, if, um, if you find these videos helpful, definitely subscribe to the channel. I think that you'll love to get the um, daily updates that we get. But more importantly, we're molding how professional traders think. And so hopefully you can start to absorb that for yourself and your trading becomes a lot easier because you're not stressed out over each individual trade. First, because you have good ideas, and second, because you understand how to manage those positions. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to trade together for the next 30 days, I highly recommend getting into the bootcamp. Uh, click down in, in the description. You'll see how, uh, how other people are doing in there, and you can make a decision if it's the right choice for you. So we're gonna head on over to Apple. We, we actually do have a big list. We did have one stock that actually closed positive yesterday and near the highs. Uh, that's got to be in the list today because relative strength relative to what happened in the market yesterday. The futures are up a little bit today, but I think most stocks are going to open lower this morning. It's a question of whether or not uh, we see the buyers come back in and say, wow, this is a great price. So everybody's away for the three-day weekend. So let's hit the charts. And um, we're going to start out with our buddy Apple. So prior to the split in Apple, we had a lot of people messaging me about whether or not should I get out of the stock before the split? Should I I'll wait for the stock after the split. Look, if you like the company, the stock split should not affect whether or not you're getting in or get out. I know there's other decisions about whether or not there's dividends and when the dividend gets paid and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But if you like the company, you like the company. The stock split should have nothing to do with it. Now, obviously, it's a much different price. Uh, it's not $500 anymore. And a lot more people could get involved now at this price with more shares. We're having to buy five shares. Maybe you can buy 1,000 shares now. Who knows? So anyway, what is the trade? So the trade here is strong stocks with a weak close and closing near the lows. You're looking for a lower opening to find support, and then you are looking to start building positions. Now we have two different types of trades, and I'm gonna walk you through. Uh, if you happen to not be a day trader, we're gonna start out with swing trading, then we're gonna go into the day trading exit. So the trade in Apple today, first off, the target is up in that 138 area over the next week or so. Now, yesterday was pretty severe, and it was a tech-related rally. So, obviously, Apple big tech, right? So, because it closed lower on Wednesday, did not close on the lows, so we weren't quite sure. And then yesterday, it opened lower and closed near the lows. Today, we're looking for it to open here, push lower, and do what we call a bullish U-turn. So, that basically means price trades lower, reverses, closes above the open and then closes above the previous day's low, very similar to what we got over here. So you can see we had a sell off, a push lower and a reversal, closed near the highs and closed above the previous day's range. That, I have to sneeze. <laughs> That's actually what we're looking for. So the entry price at Apple would be above today's high or buying or initiating the first piece of your trade at or near a strong close in Apple if that happens. So if you're swing trading, you're kind of waiting till the end of the day to start looking to initiate the first piece of what could be a longer term position. If you're looking to day trade Apple, which I absolutely am, we're going to focus on this day over here. So pretend that today uh, Apple is actually going to open. Let's say that it's up here. It closes down, uh, excuse me, opens lower. This is what we're actually looking for in Apple today. This is the opening price and the high of the opening window. So essentially all of this price action we're ignoring, once that first 15 minute window opens, we're now setting an alert at the, op we've at the opening range high, which in my case is the opening 15 minutes. You could be a little more conservative, wait for the first half hour. 
but the key, it, each of the time frames aren't really as important as much as because of how the stock traded, because of how far the stock pulled back the last two days, you want to be a little bit more conservative on your entries. And this applies to all day trades today, by the way, and let it close above what we call the opening range. And that's a little bit more uh, conviction on the idea because now it opened lower, traded higher, and now gave you a little bit of feedback that, okay, we at least right now in the short term are starting to see some buying come back in. People like it at this price. The smart money likes it at this price. And they caught a bid and started to bounce. So that's what we're going to be looking at for both swing trades and day trading uh, in Apple today. We do have a list of other stocks, but the one I want to call out first is uh, DFS, which the financial stocks were actually strong yesterday. I don't know if you saw American Express prior to the market taking a hit. Uh, this was the five minute chart. Look at how American Express started out yesterday. So my point here is this, if the market catches a bid today, if the market starts to, okay, it's, it's safe, jump back in, we're, you know, we're gonna end the week good, <laughs> three day weekend, right? Holiday weekend, all you want is good news, right? We'll see what happens. But Discover Financial, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs all bounced yesterday and they were strong until the market fell back. If you remember yesterday morning's video, we said we have one hit wonders and one of those one hit wonders were one day wonders where the financials caught a bid. Yesterday we saw a follow through. They got dragged down with the rest of the market. They will be in my list today. So it's Discover at the top of the list, quite honestly. It doesn't have resistance uh, right near it. Maybe $3 away, $4 away. So it does have a little bit of room for a day trade, but we're also going to be watching JP Morgan. We're going to be watching Goldman Sachs. I know they didn't trade well yesterday, but they were strong as any stock yesterday. One day, lower share size, little less conviction, work the orders, but they have to be in your list today. The other stock we're going to talk about today, which, gosh, hopefully you book profits where we told you two days ago, uh, DocuSign actually had earnings yesterday, and now it's trading all the way down here, filled the gap completely now after earnings and actually trading even lower from yesterday's close. Look, I have made it very clear I'm not trading against uh, earnings guidance that has been poor. There's only been one stock that has recovered, and that's NVIDIA. I am letting this stock go. I'm not trading it today. I don't care what the volatility is today. I am not going to be involved uh, because, number one, it's not a short sale in the higher time frames, and I'm not going to look to buy the stock with poor earnings guidance, but it needs to be called out. However, we do have some super strong stocks that pulled back and are now actually offering opportunities to look for longs uh, at or near yesterday's low, both as a day trade and a swing trade. So Zoom is absolutely one of those. I know Serge in our, our boot camp yesterday traded this successfully. Nice job, Serge. Uh, yes, in a tough day too. PayPal and Square are two more stocks we're gonna be looking for a pullback. And what's interesting about PayPal is that even though it closed negative and it's gonna open lower today, look again, this is reading into the charts a little more, not just, oh, it's a bull flag, a bear flag, it's above the moving average. Look at where it closed. It closed near the high. So buying came back in. And if you, if you were watching the tape with us yesterday afternoon, Tesla actually went positive from the open in the afternoon yesterday. So it's going to open a little bit lower today. But these are the little things that make a big difference over time. Uh, we discussed PayPal, Square also. Now, a lot of these stocks, especially that closed lower but closed off the lows, Yesterday's low is the first test that we're looking for today, and then we're going to look to see maybe we get some well-bid short-term candlesticks and or wait for the opening price. So there's a lot going on there. Other stocks that round out this criteria, we're looking at NVIDIA, which I just discussed, was one of the stronger stocks out there, reversing from earnings. Big C is an interesting one. I, I got full disclosure, I have not actively traded this stock, uh, but now it's pulled back uh, almost 50% from that move where it exploded to the upside. My gosh, I am absolutely looking to bid this stock on a lower opening today. Uh, we actually had a three-day consolidation here after the gap down. Obviously, there was news uh, and now pushed lower again. I am not looking for this to necessarily be a day trade. I'm looking to work this order because this is a big, interesting stock, big, interesting area that they're getting in right now. You can see it's been loved after the IPO. And hopefully, yesterday's flush gave us a little bit of a better price and maybe even some breathing room to start to build a position here. Uh, Run and VSLR pulled back quite a bit. Um, look, this is a buying opportunity now. It pulled back to support. It's opening lower again today. Now again, I can't stress this enough. We are not looking to just get long the stock 
for the sake of getting long the stock. You still need to have criteria that says, okay, it matches my long-term criteria. Now it's pulling back. Now I'm looking for a spot to enter. You must wait for price confirmation. I call it getting feedback. When you're in the boot camp, we want feedback and then we add shares. We want feedback and then we put on our position shares. We get feedback and we scale out of a little bit if it's not working. Let the market tell you what to do. Don't guess. It's easier when you just piggyback when it's obvious, right? Uh, ZS, another one that made the list today. Oh, excuse me. My keyboard's worn out. I can't even see the letters anymore. ZS actually pulled back as well. It was a little bit euphoric, but looks very similar to a couple of the charts that we just saw. Also going to open later. Now, one thing that's important, and it surprised me a little bit about um, some of the newer traders in the boot camp. Uh, number one is it's very important to know your order types. And if you have to put in a stop loss or a trailing stop or a buy stop to get into a position, you need to know that before you start trading. The second part here is that you need to know your news. Now, I'm calling out ideas. It's your due diligence after you create your game plan to just prior to the market opening, maybe 8.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, make your list. But then you have to go in there as new services all over the Internet and just see if there's any significant news that might say, you know what, I don't understand that news story. I'm going to stay away from it or eh, it doesn't really mean anything. That's the last thing you need to do before getting into your trades. Um, Microsoft, another one. This is a little bit heavier, got, got smashed. Uh, but what's interesting here is we've been looking for this stock to break 216 to the upside, and we did, and we traded through. It was a really nice swing trade that we had about a week and a half ago, maybe. Um, but now it's pulled back, and it's going to hold that same support again. So we have every reason in the world to think that this is going to be an area uh, that we should look to start to bid again. Uh, Broadcom, again, I'm going into tech because you can't leave the sector that was the strongest leading us to the upside. The QQQs, the, the tech stocks were really strong. Um, so uh, uh, Broadcom meets that criteria. Uh, and we're going to finish up with JD. JD has been uh, very strong. And again, I, I use the word vicious intraday very um, pointedly because uh, when you're watching a stock and it just doesn't pull back at all, it goes up. And the worst thing it does is go sideways intraday. There's still a bid under that stock and holding it up. And you can see the stock actually traded and held well off the lows. Um, so that, that's actually the stock speaking to yourself as well, giving you some feedback that it traded lower, the market got crushed, closed on the lows, and that stock actually fought its way back up into uh, not positive territory, but made back half of the day's losses. And again, keep an eye on Square and PayPal. They actually went positive for a minute there yesterday afternoon. So be smart today. Definitely watch that video that I posted. I'll figure out how to post the link uh, about how to manage positions. It'll reduce your stress and actually make you more profitable quicker because you'll be learning how to work those positions instead of betting all in on your initial entry, which is just really mind numbing. It really just wears you out there's, and there's no reason to do it. So have a great day trading today. Act like a pro. And more importantly, have a great weekend, three-day weekend. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. Take care, everybody.